Straight back to Pastor oh, Sasan. Again, 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 again. And a perfect yeah. pattern that time is good to Gordon Banks. A little timing pattern to the 40 yard line. It'll be a gain of about six. The way Gordon and the invaders in general have been playing, it's very good to get a nice confidence, two or three confidence passes like that. Let Fred get the idea that he's not going to get a whole lot of pressure and give him a lot more confidence to stand in there and fire. You take a look at the Oakland offensive lineup, and there was that one notable change. Lindsey Mason not starting at the offensive left tackle spot, being replaced today by Randy Vandeveer. We are live at Alamo Stadium in San Antonio. Scoreless first quarter. Invaders with their first offensive series. Have it second and three. Swing pass out of the backfield. Whittington at the 40. First down to about the 35-yard line. It'd be close to a first down. I believe he did get it. That's all going to pattern right about where they marked it. It's been a lot of fun watching this defense so far. Perry last first couple plays. I don't really have a whole lot of an idea what the heck these guys are doing out there. Where the DBs are linebackers and the linebackers are DBs. Well, they come from all over the place. Yes, in fact, they list actually six defensive backs, I guess it is. But really, they play them up on the wings. They sometimes will play them up on the line of scrimmage and actually show what amounts to a seven-man front. That's right. You saw the smiling face there of King Arthur Whittington, which in talking to the San Antonio coaches yesterday, they've got a lot of respect for Arthur. They say in the last, the last couple of weeks, he's really started to play better and better and better. And being an all-UFL choice last year, they've got to respect the way he can play. Arthur, of course, a very emotional player. He's from Texas, still lives in Texas, went to SMU, so he's got something to prove here before the Texas folks, and so far he's done it on only the second snap that the Invaders have had. It is a first down, the ball just short of the 35-yard line of the Gunslingers. Two snaps, and the Invaders have gone up on both of them. This time, Smith to the far side, and Banks to the near side. This is kind of a double wing setup, and now, coming in motion is John Thompson, the tight end. Pitch back this time to Whittington. Runs hard, gets a good head of steam. Not about the 32, it'll be a gain of about three yards. Jafus White, 31, comes over from allegedly a strong safety spot, although as you mentioned, you never know where anybody's going to be defensively. Well, they have what they call their gunslinger back, and the gunslinger back is a guy that, side like Jafus, he's 6'3", 215 pounds, and that's not a defensive back side. That's more of a small linebacker, but that's the kind of position he plays. Second and seven, ball at the 32-yard line. In the eye formation now, is Whittington the up back, but the son of still the quarterback. Smith far side, Banks near side. Long count, and now the back split. Pisana, short drop, Newton out of the backfield. 35, turns it upfield, gets about the 27. Good effort by Tom Newton that time. Rich D'Amico coming up from an inside linebacker spot to make the stop. Good execution so far by the invaders, you can see on the outside. They're, they're attacking the perimeter. Oh, excuse me, they're attacking the perimeter, and they're making those linebacker types support on the outside. Newton, of course. Many years, the New York Jets, out of the University of California, played for Mike White at the University of California, as I recall. It'll be third and three now, so early on, a big play. Slot formation, White, with Banks in the slot inside of Smith. And Bassano go up again. This is Thompson, the tight end. First down to the 20-yard line. They flooded that zone real well over there. You got, you got Mark Lewis, but Mark Lewis? Wow, they got him over there in the flat and ran the other guy in behind him. That's the way, really the way you want to do it. Brett Bassana so far, his numbers coming into this game, 39 of 74. Raiders, of course, are invaders, rather, have been very displeased. That's one. Have been very displeased with their statistics coming into this football game. The most noteworthy, the 0-4 record that they bring into it. Two tight ends of the ball game, or rather, no, now they split Banks off the line of scrimmage. They line him up on the tight end side and then split him. Now it's a slot left with Smith in the slot. Bassana, short drop again, throws out his call. A lot of the, almost like the same pattern on the other side where they ran Banks inside and dragged Smith in behind him. You know, Barry, if they can get a first down, get a score, a field goal here would almost be not what they want. They want to get a touchdown here to open the game up. They've got a new starting left tackle. They've got a defense that's got to regain its confidence in its offense. Eric Jordan comes on now, replacing Arthur Whittington. Jordan, just a rookie out of Purdue. They have high hopes for Eric Jordan. Invaders have run just one time in six offensive snaps so far today. So Bassana now looking at a second and ten. In this situation, the Gunslingers have blitzed very regularly, at least they did last week in a game that I saw against the Express. They bring Jordan up in the slot, leaving Newton alone setback. Bassana straight back out of the backfield. It's his bank. Banks at the five-yard line. is in. Yes. Touchdown, Invaders. Excellent throw by Fred Bassana. He's got Banks coming across the middle. 
there was nobody there. They had them spread out with that slot formation to the left, and the defensive back had to spread out. They couldn't really blitz, to be honest with you. He just pops that pass right in there over the middle, and then just lets Gordon use his athletic ability and his God-gifted and talents as a runner. And Banks leaning over, getting it across the goal line. That's the name of the game. Touchdown Invaders, they made it look very efficient. They got the good punt return to put him in good field position. They started things at the 35-yard line. They took it in for the touchdown. Seven plays for that touchdown, and Kevin Shea will come on to try the point out of the hole of Visana. 8.39 remaining here in the first period. Invaders looking very sharp. Sharp. Shea gets it up and good. And with 8.39 to go in the first period, it is the Oakland Invaders on the board first, ahead of the Gunslingers by a 7 to nothing count. The Invaders being very efficient on that drive. Exactly, Bear, but you know, that's the, the trap they've fallen into a couple times this season. They've gotten the ball the first and second time they've had it this season, and they'll go down in the game, and they'll score a touchdown, and they'll just go. That is only the third touchdown. Of course, the Invaders have scored this year. Second touchdown pass. We'll be back with more from San Antonio right after this. Steve Moore, interesting guy, professional saxophonist. He's a licensed barber. He also has a brown belt in taekwondo karate. So don't make fun of him playing the saxophone until it all That's comes right, down. That's right, he's either going to knock you out or cut your hair about it. <laughs> Hackett is in the slot on second down and 10. Invader defense really doing the job so far. Give this time is to the up back. That is Stamp. Oh, yeah. But there's not much. In fact, the pass new eyes. Well, here comes McClanahan over the middle to Hackett at the 35 40 to about the 43 yard line. So that time they got just enough of the blitz. Actually, McClanahan was there. Exactly. That's, that's the price you pay. And that blitz was coming hard. McClanahan was almost there. And I don't even know if Neuheisel sees him. He has a blind side. You see Joey Hackett right here grab that ball. He's not a speed merchant. And that's probably one of the reasons they don't throw a whole lot to him. But if the invaders keep bringing the outside linebackers as much as they are at this point, that middle section and a lot of the seam and the quick hooks are going to be open for that tight end. Hackett's fifth catch of this 1984 season. A big one for 19 yards and the first first down of the ball game for the Gunslingers. In motion goes Hackett once again. New Heisel straight back to pass this time. Looks around. Now he needs some help. Doesn't find it. Fumbles the football. Who's got it? I think Williams got it back for San Antonio again. It'll be his second fumble recovery of the day. He's a, Rick Duhas is one of those quarterbacks you kind of dread to play behind or in front of when you're an offensive lineman. You're never really quite sure where he's going to be. He gets about halfway back. First few seconds, he's going to look around here. Well, he's not open. Well, he's off. think I'll run. And you can't see, you can't pick that extra guy up because that guy was probably check blitzing. We call it linebacker. We're just watching the running back. Running back goes to block. He's going to blitz. So once more, the invaders taking a couple of chances and having them pay off. It'll be second and 16. Hackett lines up in the slot. The running back to Penn White and Stamper. Straight back to Zuhai. A deep drop. Took about a 10 yard drop. And what a grab is Danny Boggs with the 40 yard line. Gary Plummer drags it down, but a big first down of the 15th catch of the year for Buggs. Got some good pass protection that time and just threaded the needle. And that's the kind of pass that Danny Buggs has pretty much specialized in his whole career. You see, he doesn't get a whole lot of pressure, steps right up, zips it in there. Buggs can really hurt you going across the middle on those deep seams because he is 6'3 or so, and he's a pretty stocky or firmly built guy, and he can take those hits from the safety. I'll tell you, Randy, I haven't seen a quarterback take a deeper drop than Neuheisel has. It looks to me like he's taking about eight steps. It's really a, to the advantage of a younger quarterback like that. When he is young and he is quick, he can get back the further the better, and he gives him more time to look around. He's on a slot right with Hackett in the slot. Neuheisel might be checking off here. Gives this time to Stamper. Turns it upfield. Gets those shoulders square again and turns it into a gain of three, maybe four yards. Seems the offensive line now for San Antonio starting to get their feel of the game. And we might want to pay a little more attention. We spoke of earlier that matchup at the center, center position in the nose guard between Marshall and Winters. Yeah, we'll try to take a look at that, in fact, to try to isolate on some of those individual matchups as time goes on. But we have reached the end of the first quarter. So time runs out on the Oakland Invaders. And right now, Mo seems to be changing just a little bit here. The Invaders had it all for most of the first period. Gunslingers on the move. End of one. Seven to nothing. The Oakland Invaders over the San Antonio Gunslingers. We'll be back. 
wrestling is on the move, and right now they have their offensive gear. Exactly. Rick, Rick Duheisel is showing no hesitation at this point to just drop back and let her fly and let that ball go. They're having their problems running against the Invaders right now, except for that one big run, so I, I would look for them to keep the ball in the air. High formation now on second and seven. Al Penn White is the up back in the eye. Now the back split. Hackett in the slot. Starks to the near side, Bugs to the far side. New Heisel gives to Al Penn White this time, and he splits it upfield and gets a gain of about five, maybe six yards. Frank Manamaliuna makes the stop. Like I said, they're not having much of a hard time running the ball right yet. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, heck, if you can do that, there's your first quarter staff there. And you can see 56 passing yards for the Invaders to 28, but the balance seems to be with the Gunslingers right now, and they are moving the football. Ball at the 30-yard line. It was enough for a first down, so a gain of seven on that last play. Once more, it's Al Penn White, Scott Stamper, the back set behind Rick Neuheisel. Starks to the near side, this is the same set as the last time. Hackett in the slot, Bugs to the far side. This is Stamper at the left side, tries to turn it up field. Good balance again, gets a gain of about four yards. Actually, right now, the offensive line of the gunslingers, Randy, really getting off the ball very well. Well, the coaches say at least five in Rick, Gar Rick, Rick Garza are probably the better drive blockers. And that's what he's doing right now, he's just coming off the ball and letting the lead back you know, whether it be Penn, Penn White or Bonner come out and block for Scamper and take the three, four yards at a crack, especially at this point in the game, Oakland had real good momentum going. San Antonio comes out and is in the process of driving down the field. It looks like Randy McClanahan, number 57, probably twisted his ankle underneath him a little bit on that Astro turf. He comes out and Tim Lucas replaces him. Ron Lynn, the offensive coordinator of the Invaders, defensive coordinator, I beg your pardon, very high on Tim Lucas. He says, here's a guy who is going to get better and better. He may be a couple of years away from being a complete linebacker right now. He coached him at the University of California, and he likes him very much. And he's in the football game right now. We'll see how he performs. Well, I see Chuck Hutchison's, Hutchison's only been a head coach once, and he's already pacing up and down the sideline. Cowboys, you saw, were not the gunslinger coaching staff, just interested observers. Once more, this is the same offensive set they've used the last three snaps. It'll be second down and five for the Gunslingers. This time they bring Hackett in motion. Inside handoff, Al Penn White skips by the first man, gets out about the 21-yard line. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. Gary Plummer makes the stop. We're going to have we're going to have about a third and two coming up. They're not doing anything real complicated. Here we see Dupree Marshall being blocked down on, being very very effectively blocked down on. That's all they're doing is doubling down on the nose guard and having to get the center comes off on the backside linebacker, bring the other guard around, and it really causes a lot of stress and a lot of tension on the inside of your defense. So it'll be third down and two now for the Gunslingers. They have had trouble in these kinds of situations. Same offensive set with ha set rather with Hackett in the slot. Penn White and Stamper are the running back. Hackett now starts in motion. The give is to Stamper, and he is close. I believe he might have gotten it. Invaders started started that one right there. It looked like they had about eight guys up, and it started looking like they had about 11 guys up by the time they snapped the ball. But right now, San Antonio has got the momentum, and it's all up there up in front with that offensive line. You see the surge goes past the first down mark, and he'll get pushed back. Fifth first down of the ball game for the San Antonio Gunslingers on the fourth of this drive, which has been a very effective drive so far. Ball at the 19-yard line. First down for the Gunslingers. We're just underway in the second period. Seven to nothing ball game. Once more, the Gunslingers not doing anything fancy here. They're coming with the same set, essentially, on every snap. They'll move the tight end Hackett from one side to the other, sometimes start him in motion. That's Stamper, and there's not much there. Gary Plummer stands him up. Another nice play by David Shaw there. They're trying to run that another kind of a long trap where you pull the off guard and you trap out the outside linebacker. David Shaw would have nothing to that. He just ran up and dove into the backfield and decimated the blockers. Gain of a yard. So it'll be second and nine, and that brings about a passing down, and we'll see what the invaders do defensively here. Long drive like this is when you kind of hope the wind will pick up a little bit and give you a little breeze to help cool you off. Now they do show a different set. Two tight ends, Hackett and Osborne, in the ball game now for the Gunslingers. Long count by Neuheisel. Samper and Penn White, the running back. This is Penn White, and there's nothing doing there. Very good penetration by Frank Manamaliuna. We're going to have Nick Mickemeyer in here. You know, about two, three weeks ago, Nick lined up a 34-yard field goal. This one will be 37 yards. He lined up a 34-yard field goal nailed it. He said he got all of it and it landed about halfway into the end zone because that wind was just whistling into the stadium. I was watching Mickemeyer in practice, not this week, but last week when I was here for a game. 
and you couldn't gauge it at all. He would just, all he could do is just kick it to the middle of the goalpost. And this one's blocked. And coming away with it, I believe that's Dean, Dean Moore Dean came Moore away with it, and he fumbled it. We'll see who blocked the football. Actually, in this situation, if the Gunslingers were to recover the football, they would have it back because actually the Invaders did have possession. As it turns out, though, the Invaders will have it. We'll try to pick up the man who blocked the ball. Dean Moore recovered it, but let's see who blocked it. It looks like Dale Markham, number 72, got inside and blocked that kick, and Dean Moore recovered it and got a fumble. How can something shaped so simply be so hard to hold on to? <laughs> Dale Markham, incidentally, is the tallest player in the USFL, so there he made good on the fact that he stands six feet seven. Nevertheless, it is a third and one, and so the Invaders still looking at a short yardage situation here. Shuffling people in and out of the lineup. And they come along the to the town. With Newton and Brown, the setback. And they give us to Jordan on a reverse. Jordan at the 25, at the 30, one man from a touchdown. But it is a first down at the 33-yard line. Puck Choke makes the tackle defensively. Excellent, excellent call. Very commendable. It was had everybody fooled here. They go left. Here he comes, coming around, and Putt Choke, to his credit, just managed to read this very well. Nice break. Oh, broke that tackle. In the I formation now, Whittington is the up back. With Smith to the near side, Banks to the far side. Play action, Desano go up, goes for it all here for Ron Smith. Can he catch up to it? That should be an assurance. But there is no flag, and I want to get another look at that one because I would swear that the ref on the inside, on the sideline there, didn't have a very good view of that play, but I'm surprised the referee in the middle. You'll see Ron Smith's going to get down here, and the guy will have his arm on him. The guy on the inside should be able to tell. Here we go, right there. He holds him, and then he puts the other arm out and blocks the pass. Obviously pass interference. Yeah, I really think so, and there was no flag. Ron Smith, incidentally, has come away limping from this, and the invaders really remarkably thin. And Bassano will have time. Throws for Arthur Whittington, and throws too far and too wide. Good defense that time by San Antonio. They had it every, pretty much everybody covered, and Fred Bassano did the smart thing. A, Good intelligent quarterback will do like that and just throw the ball away. So the Invaders will have to give it up. They will give it up to the Gunslingers, who have been suffering from the same problems that they have all year, and that is being able to move the football in the middle of the field, but when they get down into scoring territory, they have just been unable to punch it in. That was the case this time, too. Nickemeyer's field goal attempt was blocked by Dale Markham. So now they'll get it back as Talley comes on to do the punting, and once more the Gunslingers show a 10-man front. We should mention again, they did block a punt last week, and that resulted in one of their touchdowns. It wound up at the six-yard line, and they took it in in two plays. Their other touchdown was a defensive touchdown, lest you think the offense was moving the football. And they come after this one, and might have gotten a piece of that. I think they did get a piece of that one. Exactly, Barry. Raiders jumping their down line around, getting the nose guard actually off the nose of the center. New Heisel to put it up again, throws for Bugs, and this one is almost intercepted by Marcus Quinn. Marcus does lead the team in interceptions. That was a very, very good play by Marcus Quinn, diving out there and batting it down. Sam for the lone setback. New Heisel has to step up, try to get away from trouble. Can't do it. He's down again. Fourth sack. And the man there responsible, I believe, was Monty Bennett, number 91. That's right. Oakland looked to come with a full-on blitz with both outside linebackers. They brought their safety up to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Quinn looked like they were bringing eight guys. They only brought three. And this is, there you see Gary Plummer faking the blitz. Mark, uh, Dupree Marshall actually should have had it right there, except he got held and pushed down. Here you see Monty Bennett come in from the side and make the tackle on Rick Neuheisel, who's got to be getting just a little bit frustrated. Once again, the Invaders playing very solid defense. And they have been doing that all year, but you can't expect your defense to play 45 minutes a game. That's what it really comes down to. In this case, they aren't. The offense doing just enough. Snap this out with the fake. And Hartley really played that fake very well. Puck showed as it at the 30 to the 25 to the 22 yard line. And it's a first down. And that's a great play. That is an, <laughs> that's an excellent call. And Puck Joe made a great run. He should have been tackled back here about the 30 yard line. Gave him a little wiggle, gave him a move, and kept on going. Puck Choate may be the leading ground gainer, actually, for the Gunslingers. Last week he had a 35 yard touchdown. That's probably their longest run of the year so far from scrimmage. 24 yards on that one for Pacho takes it down to the 22-yard line. That's exactly what I was saying about this team. They just kind of keep coming at you. Here's another look. Here we go. Even faked out the cameraman on that. Here's Pacho's going to make his move. 
And we missed the whole thing. Oh, darn it. Oh, here we go. We get, we thought Tuck get his first down and get his get tackle. Straight back over the middle this time. Wide open is Potter. First down at the seven yard back to the 11 yard line. Darrell Hart runs him out. Good patience again by Rick Newhouse. So they only brought three guys, but he was starting to get good pressure at the end there by Monty Bennett. He stepped right up and fired the ball to Bonner. Who had, by the time they got around him, you'll see Bonner come across the screen, and the whole the whole zone is cleared out. The receivers take everybody deep, and Bonner is all by himself right out there in the flat. Lowers his shoulder and gets an extra couple of yards there. They do not throw to their backs a great deal. That's the 15th reception that a running back has made this year for the Gunslingers. Bonner's six. A big play for the Gunslingers. Ball at the 10-yard line. A little short of the 10-yard line, actually. A little this side of the 10-yard line, so they can make a first down without making a touchdown. This is Stamper on the left side. Got a yard. Good tackle there by Frank Manamaluna. At this point, you know, they've ha they haven't been real consistent, the Gunslingers. They've come out of one drive and run the ball real well. This time, they haven't been able to run the ball very well, but they've been able to throw it effectively. Despite their mistakes and their mental errors and sacks and everything else, they're putting on a very entertaining show for the fans here. Yeah, they've done it. It's really a shame there aren't more fans to appreciate it because really they are an entertaining kind of football team, even though they are outmanned, as we mentioned. O'Rourke comes to the near side as the only outside receiver. Two tight ends, Osborne and Hackett on second and eight. Play action this time. New Heisel World Cup looks for Hackett. The end zone has a touchdown. That's the kind of thing a Rick Neuheisel, an active quarterback, can do. And as you can tell from the noise here in San Antonio, they don't get to score too often, and they're happy about it. Well, they brought the entire flow of the play to the left side, and Neuheisel went right all by his lonesome. Hackett was the only man in the pattern. Here we'll see it. The line goes left, the backs go left, the invaders go left. <laughs> Neuheisel just rolls out. And actually, he waited almost a little too long to fire that pass. We saw Joey Hackett had shot him before, walking through. He's a happy young man right here, but he looked kind of tired after running a 10-yard pattern. I think he might have been thinking, actually, knew how that is, that he could have run it in. He probably could have. Nickemeyer will try the point. Snap, play, kick, and he gets it up and good this time. Extra points have been a problem for this team. And just two of them last week have cost the game. 3-11 remaining in the first half. Wouldn't expect him to do too much running, especially out of a shotgun formation. Well, they will go from the shotgun. And this to the near side, Banks to the far side. Everybody in the pattern. Five people in the pattern. Sasana pump fake, throws too tall for Newton. Too tall for Newton and too short for Smith. Wasn't really too sure. There were four, four gunslingers right there, and he overthrew one, overthrew one and underthrew the other. Peter Rayford was there defending, and now the gunslingers will go to a nickel defense. Outside of the right tackle. And Sasana under siege here. Steps up. He's going to run. 35, 40. He has to think first down, and he doesn't get it. Calls the timeout real smartly. Hits the ground immediately, looks for the ref, and calls the timeout. Rock Richmond made the tackle. Third down a yard. First down as the sneak will work. Two successive carries for Fred Bassan. I'm sure he's thinking that's enough of this. And as we mentioned, the clock does stop. So if you think that was a bad play, it was not a bad play. 52 seconds remaining. First down and later. They just come to the line of scrimmage. Now the clock starts, it starts again. They, move, they stop the clock to move the chain, just like in college football. Everybody in a pattern. Big rush this time. Basana rolls away from the rush. He's going to have to run. No, he doesn't. Throws downfield. I don't believe he had possession. It was Arthur Whittington, and he was juggling the ball when he stepped out of bounds to the 35-yard line. I think the invaders might have got a little lucky there, Barry. At the beginning of the play, it looked like the seat. It something looked a little wrong. Somebody jumped. It looked like... But he's getting, right now, he's getting a little pressure. But they're breaking contain. Those defensive ends have got to keep Fred in the pocket. If he can get out and roll around, he's got enough mobility to be dangerous. Sasana, incidentally, after a very solid start, is now zero of his last seven. But he's had a few of those drops. It's not all quarterback fault. That's true. Second and ten, that's not so much as important as the fact that there are 36 seconds remaining here in the first half. So Sasana now, this time, will go from under center rather than out of the shotgun. He has Smith to the near side and Banks to the far side. And this time out of the backfield. Flag is down. Whittington gets a great block that time. Cuts it back upfield. We'll see who made the block out of about the 39-yard line. I, I believe that was Jim Leonard, number 63. And you're also going to see Mr. Leonard be called for illegal receiver downfield, I believe. No, he was done downfield. He just held the guy. That's right. okay. I thought he was a great block. <laughs> Here it is, and he really, just really very wrapped him up. 
14 seconds left in the first half, the 7-7 ball game. Long count, now he's straight back to pass, lofts it up here, and lofts it too far for Gordon Banks. Second time they've tried that play, first time was closer. And that one right there was a pass, Gordon I think. He, threw, he wanted to complete that pass, but he wasn't going to have anybody but Gordon catch it in this situation. Well, that took five seconds. It'll be second down. Masana comes back to the huddle now, talks it over with his team. Masana is a, a natural leader. He's one of those guys that the team just instinctively listens to. Does take charge out there. This time, Thompson really lined up in a slot to the right side. A little deeper drop this time for Masana. Comes the pressure, steps away, throws for Whittington at the 35. And the last call timeout right here. It'll be 51 yards from here. Davis White makes the stop. So the Sonic shows some of his nimble feet here, stepping out of, out of the way of a little trouble, steps up and hits Arthur Whittington out in the flat. And unfortunately, Arthur can't get out of bounds. He gets put down pretty hard. Kevin, this has got to be, like we were saying earlier, the extreme outside of Kevin Shea's range right here. I would have to think so, and the fact that he has not been getting much practice in kicking. I mean, possibly he has during the week, but he hasn't in game conditions. He's only attempted two field goals all year long. So Kevin Shea comes on to try to do what he has been doing in practice. Snap, place, kick, almost blocked. Did he get enough? I don't know. It's going to be a little short, I think. And it is. It's down in the end zone. It was short and right. So the difference once more, graphically being shown between practice and the real thing, and Kevin Shea did get it over the block intention. Got it up in the air. That's one out of two. It's amazing he even got that off. But I've got a lot of these little running backs. Marcus Bonner, 5'9", 173. Scott Stamper, also running 5'9". He does go 204. These are the kinds of guys that are, I guess, the defensive linemen. They're pests. Bug comes to the near side now and starts to the far side. And once more, Hackett in the slot. Bonner and Stamper remain the running back behind Neuheisel, and Hackett goes in motion. Play action, Neuheisel will go up. Here comes a late rush. Throws and has bugs for a first down to score to midfield. Packed this 15 onto the end of that 17 yard game, so the run numbers will be a benefit of 32 yards. Instant drive. The guys in the black stripes there could be instant First offense. foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 58, first down. That's the 13th first down now for the young players, so they're putting together a pretty respectable offensive day to day. Bugs once more to the near side again. This is the same set we've seen all day. Stamper on a quick hitter gets out. The open for a moment turns it into a game of 10 yards. That's another one of those situations where I think we got some good blocking in the inside of that offensive line by the gunslinger. And also you got a guy, 5'9", 205, who just keeps his legs churning and keeps moving and bounces off the block. Second in the yard now. New Eyes in a great position. Al Penn White gets by the first man, won't get by the second. It's going to be a loss of the yard. Real nice play by, by Randy McClanahan and Bonnie Bennett to cut him off to the outside. Also David Shaw was in there. And then Plummer and Malamaluna came in and finished him off. So a loss of one, maybe two yards is going to bring about a third and three. They go from second and one to third and three. Al Penn White unable to square the shoulders and turn it upfield. Incidentally, Danny Bugs has come off with some sort of an injury. I don't believe it's a serious one. He's been replaced by Larry O'Rourke, who comes to the near side now with Starks to the far side. Hackett slot left. Bonner and Stamper, the running back. Hackett in motion. Give it to Bonner at the left side. Plenty of room. Turns it upfield. 25 down about the 24. It'll be a first down. Flag is down. We're going to get another unnecessary reference pedal on the Vaders. Might be a face mask. Frank Duncan looks pretty fired up right now, so that might be right, right about where our penalty is going to fall. Duncan, 42 from San Francisco State. Out as a strong safety. They moved him over to the free safety right spot. Gives him an opportunity to do a little bit more freelancing. And that was a face match penalty against Frank Duncan out of San Francisco State. We'll see it come up here on the left. He's just going to run a, a good flashing run here. They kick out the outside linebacker and he just goes at it. McClanahan gets out of the way and here is the face match right there. Aye, yeah, yeah. That's why you do all those neck exercises during the offseason just in case something like that happens. Unintentional face mask, five yards, but it is five yards. And down to the 19-yard line, first down. Give this time is 
to Bonner again, and Bonner trying to run a circle route here. Gets it back to the middle of the field, turns it downfield for a gain of about three to the 16. Gary Plummer makes the stop. Had, a, had that defense real, real well. Once again, strung it out on the outside, right, turned it back in. And defensively, that's what you want to do. O'Rourke remains in the ball game. He's to the left side. Neuheisel going straight up this time. Out of the backfield, Sample at the 20. Down about the 15. It'll be a gain of a yard, maybe two. Gary Plummer again there to make the stop. 326 remaining here in the third period. Came Marion Flanahan came with the blitz again. They picked it up, but very wisely, Gary Plummer was out there to pick up that running back that Stumper, Stamper, I should say, that came out there. And Invaders will go to six deep backs now as they bring McClanahan and Shaw out of the lineup and bring John Sullivan and Daryl Hart on. So third and seven, this is a big play for the Gunslingers. Inside of three minutes remaining third period, 10 to seven ball game, Invaders lead it. Both these teams looking for their first win. Joey Hackett hasn't caught a pass yet this half. Here's Stamper, tries to get outside, and does so. 15 to the 10-yard line. He'll be short of the first. He'll have the first down. I beg your pardon. He will be short of the first down. They moved the chain up a little bit just to get out of the way, and it was back around the 12-yard line. So he's going to be about a yard or two short. And I would think they will go, but we'll see. Bill Sankey is not, a, not an individual that really goes with the norm. He's a really a character. I had a chance to talk to him quite a bit yesterday. Heck of a guy. He's going to go for this first down here. What's he got to lose? He's only down 10-7. to 7. He's got a good, young, enthusiastic team. And they've been running the ball real well against him, baby. Fourth and two. I'll tell you, you find a lot of NFL coaches that question this, but this is the USFL. It is one of those leagues that, leagues that does have that kind of excitement. You never know what's going to happen. Neuheisel, play fake. He'll go to the end zone. And it's batted away. Bennett was the man who batted it away. Pass was intended for Marcus Bonner at about the four-yard line. That was, that was a long nice throw by Monty Bennett, but there's only one thing. you got to point out to Monty Bennett that even though you wear those 90 numbers, it's okay, Monty. You can catch this. Grab it. Get it. Nope. Well, I'm going to knock it down. Yeah, but <laughs> that could have been a heck of an interception right there, but that's okay. It's first down. The invaders got the ball back. <laughs> Actually, it's a play that you can't question either. I know the fans don't like it here, but I like that play. I'll go on record. I like it. I'm going to think about it. We're going to go away. We'll be back right after this. 155 remaining. 10 to 7 ball game. The Invaders lead it. They'll have it in the left. And they do come after it, but they don't get it. Wobbly kick. Sends Bonner to about the 33-yard line. He's all about his lonesome here. And starts back to the side. That might be a clip. And he gets about the 40-yard line. No flag. Wow. It's this, awful this close to the whole flip. game. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's a flag on the sideline. Daryl Hart, don't do that. The quickest way to get a referee mad when he throws the flag is to pick it up and throw it back at him. But uh, it might be an unnecessary roughness or something like that over there on that sideline. If it is, it's not going to sit well with the boys in white over there. So we'll see what this is all about. Listen. Personal foul against the kicking team, against the receiving team, the officer, first down. Somebody has to explain that one to me, too. Ah, dual dummies. I like it. <laughs> Never makes much sense to be swinging at people and do things like that with those helmets and all those. Now, you hurt you in that. Yeah, it just hurts your hand. That's all it does. Back at the tight end, starts in an up position. Invaders show blitz and then don't come. New Heisel down the field, and I think Hackett might have put his hands on the ball that Bugs was going to catch. So all it is then is the third and 19. Long way to go for Rick New Heisel. Ball is at the 32-yard line. They've gone backwards on this drive. Four-man rush this time, and batted away beautifully. That is our new man. That Carl is. Sullivan, who was not even supposed to be playing here. He was supposed to be playing on special teams, but not in that situation. He got a hand on the ball. Number 96. He used to be a tight end. We'll see him come in here from the left-hand side of your screen. New Hampshire goes to flip the ball, and he taps it right there. He's been a tight end in the past, and they made it a, uh, an analogy to William Gay from the Detroit Lions. They're trying to take a tight end and make him into a defensive end. He's a good, pretty good-sized guy, wiry, very strong. 
and they may get a, another flag here. And let's see what this one is going to be a procedure call again, I believe. It's, there was still time left on the 30-second clock. And what we saw right there was just when you have a false start. Listen to this. Number 20. It is an automatic first down. It would have been anyway. Give this time to Whittington, and there's nothing there. Arthur might have squeezed out a yard there. It was an excellent yeah, defensive play up front. Paul oh, Hanna there to make the stop. Another rookie from Purdue. If you look around this league, there are a number of rookies from Purdue. And as I recall, Purdue wasn't that great a football team last year. Not really, but uh, Jim Young's doing a heck of a job up there in Purdue. Came out of Arizona and went up to Purdue the last couple of years. He's really, they've been competitive. That's a tough conference nowadays. It's gone out of the Neanderthal stage. Guys like Mike White have really modernized that conference. That's really true. This time Smith comes to the near side and banks to the far side. On second and nine. And in motion comes Jordan. Fasano will go up again. Has to roll away from pressure. Now he's got, got himself some time. He's going to have to run. And he goes out of bounds to the 39-yard line. He had some time, and unfortunately, he also had Mr. Putt Choke chasing him. <laughs> Choke can run pretty good, actually. Surprisingly, because Putt's not really a real, real big guy. He's six foot, 230, but he motors around pretty good. He does, like we mentioned earlier, he has that one interception for a touchdown, and they obviously don't hesitate to snap the ball on that punt team either. 12 minutes, 36 seconds remaining to be played here in this football game. And the Slingers will go now to a nickel defense. There's Putt. Looking rather fearsome. Of course, it's kind of hard to look real fierce in the purple aquamarine and silver. I think that's true, <laughs> yeah. But those neck braces help. Smith near side. Doug's far side. On the wing is Jordan. In the slot is Thompson. Newton alone setback. Here comes the blitz. And Vasana picks it up. It is almost intercepted off the hands of Gordon Banks. That might have been able to call pass interference, and obviously Gordon Banks and his gyrations and running around thinks it was. Looked like the defensive back did have his hand on Gordon Banks' left arm, or right arm, I should say. Brock Richmond would have been the guilty party. That's about the first time she will see Gordon Banks. They come with a blitz. Fred takes a five-step drop, gets good protection, and tries to hit Gordon Banks on that quick slant again. I think Gordon Banks looked like he almost wasn't really ready to have that pass be thrown to him. So Tally will come on to do the punting, and he will be kicking to Bonner, but once more, a 10-man front shown by the gunslingers. And they bring everybody once again, and they don't get it again. Kind of a floating kick, and Bonner's going to let this one go. It's going to turn out very much to the adva invader's advantage. I think that's easy to say, invader's advantage. <laughs> 45-yard punt for Tally. 12-20 remaining to be played. Rick Neuheisel, the quarterback. Hackett once more in the slot. O'Rourke to the far side. Bugs has not returned, incidentally, and that could be a factor in this football game. Neuheisel to Bonner. And Bonner bounces off the first man. Gets the 20, has a first down at about the 28. Bonner wasn't going to have anything to do with Kenny Daniel coming up and trying to tackle him right there. He just bounced right off and went out for an extra seven yards. Don't know what the nature of the injury to Danny Bugs is, but he has not returned. Third down and three. This is a very big play for the Gunslinger. 10-50 remaining to be played in the football game. Two tight ends of the ball game now. O'Rourke, the lone outside receiver. And to give us the stamper. They try to go outside, and they're going to be stopped well short. Wow. I don't know if we got that on a replay, that play, but number 61, Rich Garza out of Temple. 6'1", 270, just leveled somebody. That was ugly. We'll see Garza's right hand, number 61 there. He's going to pull, come across the screen. It was a good play by the rest of the Invaders' defense. They fill up here. You see Frank Duncan. You see Tim Lucas, but just the feet of the defender flying up in the air. Tim Lucas, as a matter of fact, flying up in the air. That is an impressive block, but a good defensive play by the rest of the Oakland Invader defense. And they will have to give it up on fourth down and three. They faked it once before, not this time. Hartley gets the snap. And again, he really sends them. Got a lot of height out of this, a lot of hang time, wobbly kick. And that could be interference. It allow, yes, it is. The flag is going to be down. They did not let Banks catch the football. I'm sure the gunslingers are going to argue the fact that their man was blocked into Gordon Banks. But I don't know if that's, the uh, referees are going to let that walk. A 35-yard punt. Barfield was the man 
who was standing in the way of Gordon Banks' attempt to catch the football. The player was blocked into the man. No foul. As you see, the sign is directing a little traffic here. And now they bring Banks in the slot inside of Lewis. Straight back to Sana. Under a pressure, and there's the first sack back at the 11-yard line. It came at the right time for the swingers. Frank Case was the man who they came over to make the sack. Enthusiasm, young man, played last year with the Philadelphia Stars on that good team they had out in Philly last season, but that was the first sack, you said, of Fred Bacana, and could not have come at probably a less opportune time. Ooh, cuts it back to 20, gets the 15, gets about the 12, it'll be a first down. Good individual effort. The blocking was blocking was good. It was probably a three or four yard game with the blocking. But Bonner really made some nice cuts and made a couple of good fakes. Gain of 14 for Marcus Bonner. Hackett comes in motion. Play fake and New Heisel rolls out. Throws for Bonner. He's got to the 10 to the 5 down about the 3 yard line. Might have been a fumble in there. Let's see. I think he did fumble the ball, but I'm not sure if it was before the whistle blew. I believe they're saying that it was after the play was dead. And we're going to get the two-minute warning now. Hart and Plummer made the stop. There's the story of this football game. 157 remaining to be played. 10 to 7 scoreboard with the invaders on top. But the gunslingers are threatening. Third down and two for a first down, four for a touchdown. Al Penn White, he's close. He has a first down regardless. And it stopped just short of the goal line. So they'll have four downs to punch it in from here. He's right there, about a ball's length away. Excellent, excellent blocking up front. Here we see the, deep, the, the invaders from behind. Good one-on-one -on -one lead blocking. Scamper gets a nice block, misses his block, matter of fact. But it's enough to get him right there to within about a foot of the end zone. So they got four downs from here. Not real fancy there. And the crowd is alive and on its feet. It's not a big crowd, but it's a very exuberant crowd when the gunslingers do things right. Offensively, they haven't done much right, but right now, they are, and that's what's important to them. Give it this time to Penn White. Touchdown! Too great. The blocking was pretty good, but all that they really did was they got down low of the offensive line. Not so much to blow the guys out. You'll see them. They stopped the defensive charge. Mark Dupree Marshall there almost makes the play in the backfield, gets knocked down, and that's just enough for him to squeeze in and put a touchdown. Well, they might have found themselves, found themselves a short yardage running back, which they did not have. Al Penn White making the tough yards down inside the five-yard line, takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. You see it again there. After seeing that replay, he made it, but he didn't make it by a whole bunch. Mickelmeyer will try the point. Snap, place, kick, good. 122 remaining. And the Invaders are now the team that are gonna, is going to have to be the comeback team. The Invaders have brought this on themselves. It hasn't been so much a situation that San Antonio played that good. The Invaders have let this team stay in the game so long that they finally couldn't help but stumble into taking advantage of some of the mistakes the Invaders made. And the fact is they need six. The field goal will do them no good. It's a 14 to 10 ball game in favor of the Gunslingers. So they got to go all the way here. And number 14, Fred Bassana. Coming off a very fine year in 1983, he has been plagued with all sorts of problems this year. Namely, an inept offense. When you're running for your life, it's hard to be a real effective quarterback. And now, 26 sacks in five games. To the credit, 12 of them were in the first game. Well, and in fact, in the last two weeks, there have only been two. So you can't say that it's the offensive line, really, that's been breaking down. This will be Mark Lewis. He'll try it at the goal line. 5, 10, 15. That's it to the 16. 171, I don't guess really you would, and Bassano, no place to go, he's wrapped up back at the 19-yard line. Ken Gillen made the play. Ken Gillen made that sack, but that should have been, but before the sack was even made, it should have been a holding call on Randy Vanderveer. He, he dragged him down, practically, by his face back. And not very well. And here, he, we'll, we'll see Vanderveer come spinning into the screen from the left-hand side, right there. There you go, he, somebody had a hold of his face at that time he was spinning around. 
Four-man rush, Casada in trouble, steps up, throws short, and it's almost intercepted by Rayford. Uh, Omer, who almost intercepted it. A lot of celebrations going on in the field right now in the stands. This is a very, very exciting. Even got the assistant coach doing high fives with players coming off the field. This is great. You got to be happy for a group like this. A group that really is out outmatched as far as physically by the other team. Hangs in there and makes the best of the situation. They played really well defensively. In fact, they played really well defensively the last two weeks. And today they did it pretty much head up. They didn't do anything fancy. You have to credit the gunslingers. And once again, it is an inept second half offensively for the invaders. And so now all Rick Neuheisel has to do is fall on the ball, wait to be cut. Barry, this time last year, the Michigan Panthers were one and four. Their owner went out, spent some money, specifically on some non-skilled people, offensive linemen, Line defensive linemen, got some old quality players, turned the year around and made the playoffs. They won the championship. I don't know if, our, if the owners here in Oakland are going to do something like that, but the season isn't over by any stretch of the imagination for the invaders. But it's time now to get out of the lower echelon and maybe get a hold of some good ball players. Now, in fact, when you really look at it, this, for all intent, is the first regular season game because they don't play preseason games. So the first four games, the equivalent, of course, of what the NFL would be playing in the preseason. Admittedly, they don't look at quite as many people, perhaps, because the games do count on the record. But nevertheless, there's a long way to go from here. Gil Sankey congratulating some of his people. And with good reason. I think it's a fair statement to say the better team on this day has won this football game. The invaders just need a few more weapons. It's like the, the old thing about the Russian army trying to trying to fight the Germans with their mounted cavalry horses against the tanks. It just doesn't do it. You gotta go out and get yourself some tanks. And so things. Things just about wrapped up. You got to look at Greg Fields, number 99. He's very happy here. He's happy to be anywhere. When they was cut by John Hadle in Los Angeles, he smacked him in the face. Yeah, but I don't think he expected Hadle to smack him back. Timeout. <laughs> Oakland. And so Gil Sankey is going to keep him on the team. I'll tell you that. I think, in all fairness to the invaders, though, Barry, in, in their situation, given their personnel, they are still themselves in an expansion team. They are in the same market as the Gunslingers and a team like that, and the Chicago team, which was the Arizona team last year. They don't have the real horses to compete with some of these better teams. They definitely have the horses to compete with the San Antonio Gunslingers. So New Heisel goes down for the final time, and that will be it. The clock will tick down. And a very happy San Antonio crowd will leave Alamo Stadium satisfied. And in fact, they've seen a little bit of history. They have seen the very first victory ever for this San Antonio Gunslinger team. And it might bring a few bodies out here next time. They're a pretty exciting team to watch, actually. What they need is a little bit of offense, but as we said at the top of this program, they can get after it.